Good morning and welcome to our weekly online worship. In today's Gospel reading from Matthew, Jesus begins to turn his attention to his final entry into Jerusalem. We begin with a thanksgiving for baptism. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. You are the fire of rebirth. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for cloud and rain, for dew and snow. Your waters are below us, around us, above us. Our life is born in you. You are the fountain of resurrection. Praise to you for your saving waters. Noah, his family, and the animals survived the flood. Hagar discovers your well. The Israelites escape through the sea, and they drink from your gushing rock. Naaman, rushes, Naaman washes his leprosy away, and the Samaritan woman will never be thirsty again. At this spot, holy God, we pray, Praise to you for the waters of baptism and for your word that saves us in this water. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here and into all creation. Illumine our days, enliven our bones, dry our tears. Wash away the sin within us and drown the evil around us. Satisfy all our thirst with your living water, Jesus Christ our Savior who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Glory to God.
I invite you to join me in prayer. Oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us the strength to follow your commands through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We listen to the Word of God. The first reading comes from Jeremiah, chapter 15, starting at verse 15. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down my retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice under the weight of your hand. I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who turn to you, not you will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 26, verses 1 through 8. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession around your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell, and the place where your glory abides. The second reading comes from Romans 12, verses 9 to 21. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay any evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Here ends the reading. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks. Thanks be to God.
this morning is recorded in the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 16, verses 21 through 28. From this time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your minds not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they get, give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what he has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Yahweh does not promise Jeremiah, his prophet, an easy time. Neither are the people of Judah going through an easy time. Judah has been overrun by an enemy. Jerusalem fell in 597 BC, and by 587, the whole nation was in ruin. If Jeremiah is to preach the word of the Lord, the people will not receive it, but fight against Jeremiah and his message. What Yahweh does promise is that Yahweh will be with Jeremiah throughout. When Jesus begins to teach his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and die, Peter takes Jesus aside with the purpose of dissuading him. The other disciples aren't exactly enamored with what they are hearing either. Following God isn't particularly easy to swallow or to persuade others to swallow. We can look at many ways in which to view this teaching of Jesus and how it might fit, or more to our liking, not fit into our lives at this particular time. But I'm pretty certain most, if not all of us, are easily able to identify areas of our individual, family, and community existence where it is possible to describe the difficulties we are encountering in our lives as we apply these words of Jesus to our own lives. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. What we are given in our second reading this morning is a pretty thorough description of the new life in Christ. And I invite you to sit back and listen. This is a description of our times, if ever there was one. This is Paul writing to the community of believers in Rome, but like all of scripture, the message is for all people in all times and for all places. Hear the word of God. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, 
what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministry, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Don't think you know it all, but enjoy the company of ordinary folk. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, Give them something to drink. For by doing this you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. May all of us, everywhere, who bear the name of Christ and who claim to deny ourselves and pick up our cross and follow Jesus, do so in the light of this, Paul's description. To God be the glory. Confident in your care and living in the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Each petition ends with the words, Lord, in your mercy, and our unison response is, hear our prayer. The Lord is my song, the Lord is my prayer.
faithfulness. You teach us that if we are to be your followers, we are to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow you. Meet us in our current situations in life. Reveal to us your faithfulness, righteousness, and justice for all. Renew us in our faith, journey with us throughout life. Heal us of all our ills and reform us, molding and shaping all the baptized until together we become the priesthood of all believers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. We hear of fires, winds, torrential rains, earthquakes, and the ongoing challenges of climate change. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all of creation. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. God of wisdom, Guide your one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We ask your blessing upon our national bishop, Susan, and our synod bishops, Michael, Jason, Sidney, Larry, and Greg. Keep them strong and healthy, and utilize the gifts each has for your church. We are grateful for their presence, leadership, and guidance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, you call us to live peaceably. Give us ears to hear one another, particularly those we name as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding as countries and regions continue the process of reopening economies and all aspects of communal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all healing, Grant hope and assurance for all who are looking for healing, cure, and relief. We name before you those who have asked for our prayers. Phyllis, Greg, Adam, Mary, Walter, Lorraine, Angie, Richard and Dana, and those of our congregation who are in care homes. Laura, Ella, Teresa, Helen, Gordon, Heidi, Irvin and Ella, and Irene, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, be with us as all countries where students of all ages, teachers, assistants, custodians, administrators, school nurses, and police officers are returning to schools, colleges, universities, and other institutions of learning and education. Grant them health, wholeness, hope, opportunities for education, and social environments that are safe and inviting for all. We place this new school year into your hands, O oh God. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. God of love, you gather into your embrace all who have died. Receive them into your saints in light. Grant them eternal rest and give them peace. Be present with all who grieve and give us all faith to take hold of the promise of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Finally, we are grateful for your spirit of faithfulness among us, for our leaders, council members, and all who call St. Matthew's their church home. We long for the day when we can once again congregate and commune physically with each other as your people. Maranatha, may it come soon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Uh, please uh, feel free to share a sign of the peace with those that are around you this morning.
This is the time in our worship where normally we would receive an offering. And we appreciate you sending in your offerings during this time when we do not gather. And we ask you to remember that most of our expenses are fixed. Offerings and gifts can be made by e-transfer or sent by check through the mail to St. Matthew's Lutheran Church, Post Office Box 330, Thorsby, Alberta, T0C, 2P0. If you have offering envelopes, please include the envelope number in your message. Thank you. This is much appreciated. And at this time we have an offering prayer. God of grace, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts, that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in our world, through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. <laughs> justice and love. We give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Now receive the benediction. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, Bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. I want to thank again those who participated in our worship today. Uh, to Carolyn for providing our music and for Britain, uh, to Brittany for taping and assisting as well. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God.